In southern Taiwan, the Colombo Queen's already cracking up, and the operation to remove the sand from her cargo holds is well underway. I have to remove as much sand as I can to uh, continue with my plant so it comes closer to its own weight. The sand, that's only that corner. OK. Start with number four, then we do number three. Airlifting. Airlifting involves using a pump to suck out sand and water from the bottom of a vessel. Head diver Arthur Pye will make sure the nozzle's in the right place. He dives down to a rack or dives inside a rack, and he has to go through many openings. He has uh, many ways of getting tangled up. Uh, there are all kinds of obstructions that he has to overcome. The Colombo Queen is beached in a particularly fragile coastal park. The salvers cannot risk damaging any of the rocks and reefs when they try to refloat her. So they've brought in one of the world's leading marine biologists to advise them how to avoid this, Helen Newman. The Taiwanese are particularly interested in rocks and rock formations. So of course the national park with whom we work are very keen to ensure that their um, natural attraction here is not damaged in any way. My mission today is to go and check the marine life in the vicinity of the wreck, get a feel for what actually is down there and if there's anything I need to let Paul know about regarding anything that's particularly sensitive. If Helen finds something particularly sensitive, which stops the ship from being moved, the reef float could be off. Visibility isn't great, but I'm not sure that the weather's going to hold out, so I need to get what I can now. Otherwise, if it deteriorates, I can't get in at all, but we'll see. Visibility below is good enough for Helen to survey all the sensitive parts. Since it's gone in, it came in very straight. It didn't move when it came in. It just rolled around a little bit until it was holed, and then it sunk fast. So thankfully, it hasn't rolled around and bashed a load of, of um, marine life. For the salvage master, this is the best possible news. The Colombo Queen can be pulled out to sea without doing any damage. But that's not the end of it. Getting the sand out of the hold is taking longer than expected. And they need to stop more sand from being washed in through the holes and cracks. That means patching with an underwater welder. More work for Arthur. If I go to in the water, so my colleague will pick me up. Nobody wants to exit the heaven. That means Arthur will be putting his life on the line again. Welding underwater gives off explosive gases. These can ignite if they build up in pockets. There have been a lot of jobs that people lost their life during the operation. For example, divers and got an explosion when doing the cutting. A lot of accident uh, happens as well, and people died from it. The welding team consists of five divers. They get their air through the yellow hose. Before we dive, we just make sure that everything is uh, under control. So the hose gets stuck on the surface because surface a lot of, lot of pipe, a lot of valve. Then the, the waves come and waves go. It will bring the hose, maybe just tangle on the valve. So we just go down to take out tension on the hose. So there will be no, no problem. Most uh, scare is uh, no air. <laughs> Salvaging the Colombo Queen was supposed to take two weeks. They've been at it for 18 days. 